Okay, so let's um, go ahead and see how you did on your drawings. So if I need theta to be 150, I know that that's going to be over here. Yeah, let's give it my color. I know that that's going to be over here in my second quadrant right here. So I'm going to do my theta as 150. Draw my arrow. Okay. My theta to be 315, I know that that's going to fall down here in quadrant three, four. And then my 4 pi over 3, if we convert that back to degrees, what was that? 240. So I know that's going to be down here in quadrant 3. Let's label that. And then our last one, our pi over 6, what degree is pi over 6? 30. So he's going to be over here in quadrant 1. So that one is 30. Okay, so here's what we have for our angles. Now we're going to go back and we're going to, going to find the reference angles. All right, so we go back up to the definition. Uh, the acute, it is positive, acute, and it is determined by the x-axis and the terminal side. So if we go back to our first one, my terminal side I'm going to highlight, and my x-axis I'm going to highlight. Well, I cannot use I cannot use this x axis x axis because I know that's 150. That doesn't give me a reference angle, right? That's not acute. So I'm going to go to this side of the x axis, and I'm going to find that value. What's the value of that angle? 30. So my alpha, your out that's your little alpha right there. My alpha or my reference angle in this case is 30 degrees. Okay, let's find the reference angle for 315. Again, it needs to be um, the terminal side and the x-axis. In order to get an acute one, I must use this side of the x-axis. So I'm looking for this angle right here, and that would give me what? Four, 45? 45? Yes. Okay. So that alpha, our reference angle is 45 degrees. Okay, so now let's go down to that 240. So again, using the definition, using our terminal side, I need an acute, I need a positive acute, so I'm going to have to use this part of the x-axis right here. So I need this angle. What would that be? Okay, so this one would give us 60, because we have to keep it acute and M positive. So alpha, 60. And our last one, so using our definition, so my terminal side, and I need to keep it acute, so I'm going to use this part of my x-axis. What would my alpha be here? It's just the 30, right? It's just the 30. Gosh, where did 30, 60, and 45 come from? Where do those angle measures come from? Mm -hmm. Look at your special right triangles. What are, those, what are the angle degrees in your special right triangles? Those 30, 60, and 90, or sorry, 45, okay. So quadrant one was down here at number eight. Our theta was 30 degrees. What was our reference angle? Our reference angle was 30 degrees. So what is your thought process? How did you determine what your alpha was? How did you determine what the reference angle was? Our reference angle was what? It was the theta. It was the central angle. Right? Let's go to quadrant two. Quadrant two is over here with that 150. So how did we get the 30 degrees? How did we get that 30 degrees? You had an angle of 150 
and your x-axis was 180, right? How did you get the 30? Thank you. You did 180. That won't work. Minus your theta to give you your alpha. Okay, let's go down to quadrant three. That's number seven. How did we get that 60 degrees? You had an angle of 240. You had to go back to your x-axis of 180. How did we obtain that 60 degrees? Thank you. Yes, you took the 240. Oh, your theta. I'm going to change that. Hold on. You took your um, theta, in this case that 240, and you subtracted the 180 to give you your alpha. Right? 240 minus 180 gave us the 60. And then our last one, our quadrant 4, which was number 6. Let's come up here. How do we get that reference angle? Yes, very good. We took 360 and subtracted that, that 315, which was our theta. Okay? Any questions on those? So those are your reference angles for, for each quadrant. Quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. So these were the multiples of our 45. So we got a 135, a 225, and a 315. Then you went back and converted those into your radians. You got pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. So who can tell me a pattern that they see with our radians? Maya? They're odd. Right? We have a 1, we have 1, we have 3, we have 5, and we have 7. And so since they are all odd, they were all decreasing by, or sorry, increasing by what? 2. By 2. Okay? So good observation with our radians. Okay? We noticed that the, and these were the numerators, that they were odd and they were increasing by 2. Anything else you notice about the radians? Look at the denominator, right? Yes, thank you. The denominators are all 4s. Right? They're all 4s. What about the angles themselves, the degree measures? You notice that they are all multiples of 5. You see the degrees? That'll be, okay. The degrees themselves all end in 5. Okay. Those are all really, really good patterns for those 45 multiples of your 45s. Okay. Any questions on those? All right, so the, um, the 30 degree angles, if you look at those radians, those radians all have a divisor of 6, okay? So we can look at those and say that those, the 30 degrees, those all are, are have a divisor of 6. We went from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 to 7 pi over 6 to 11 pi over 6. So again, the numerators are all what? And they still, again, all odd as well. Okay. And the numerators are odd. You go from a, from a 1 to a 5 to a 7 to an 11. The reason you have a big gap from here and here and from here to here is, is it's the, it's the, the quadrantal angles pick up those extra ones. All right, what about the 60s? What do you, is there any patterns you see with the 60 degrees? You have pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. So what's going on with the 60 degree angles? They're, they are all being divided by 3. Okay? So there's you some more patterns 
to follow. So I'm going to take the fact that this is my largest 30 degree, this point right here is the largest x value. Oh, I'm sorry, the first thing I'm going to do is if I look over there, I notice that every one of those legs have something in common, every single one of them, not including the radius, but the rest of them. I notice that they're all divisible by 2. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to put divided by 2. Now, I'm going to use the fact that that 30 degree angle, its x coordinate is the largest angle or largest or distance or longest distance from the origin. So above the 2 here, I'm going to put a 3, it's the furthest, and then the 45, it's the next furthest, which would be, I'm going to put 2, and then the 60, I'm going to put as a 1. And the next consistency I notice when I look over at those special right triangles, I see a lot of square roots. You see a lot of square roots over there? So the next thing I'm going to do in those numerators is I'm going to go back and I'm going to square root all of them. Now one of those square roots, that being the square root of 1, well, what is the square root of 1? One? 1. So I'm going to go back and kind of rewrite that one. The square root of 1 is 1. So I'm going to go back and write that. Now we are, now when we focus on the y values, we notice that the 60 degree point is the largest. So that becomes the 3, then the 2 for the 45, and then the 1 for the 30. And then again, I'm going to go back and do what? I'm going to square root them just like I did before. And I'm not going to do the 1 this time because we know square root of 1 is 1, right? So I'm just going to leave it. Okay. So there's our ordered pairs for our quadrant 1. Okay? So what's really nice about this, um, when I, when I told you you were going to go in and fill the rest of those in, you were looking at me like, no way am I going to do that. I can't figure that out. Well, you don't have to figure it out. You've already found them, okay? Because really, we're really just reflecting these points over here. We're reflecting the points over here, and we're reflecting the points over here. So they're actually going to maintain the same value. The only thing that's going to change is the fact that X's and Y's have different positive and negative values in each quadrant, right? So in quadrant one, your X and Y values are both what? Positive. They are both positive, right? In quadrant two, X is what? Negative, Negative and Y is positive. And in quadrant three, X is? negative and y is negative. And in quadrant 4, x is positive and y is negative. Okay? So I'll do, how much time do we have? I'll, we'll see how many we get. So let's come over here to our quadrant 2. My one, my degree of 120. 120 is the reflection of the 60, right? 120 is the reflection of the 60. The 60 had ordered pair of what? Up there. What was that? The 1 half and the square root of 3 over 2, right? So come over here and do the same thing. However, what's going to change is your x. So instead of being a positive 1 half, it's going to be a what? Negative 1 half. So this would be a negative 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. Should have done that in the... We need to change it back to the 
other color. Hold on, I'll change it back. The negative one half and the three three half. Okay. So the one thirty five is a reflection of which one? The forty five, which was the square root of two over two and the square root of two over two. Over here, it's going to be what? Negative square root of two and positive negative. What did I say? Negative square root of 2 over 2 and positive square root of 2. So this is just going to come over here to the 135, and then, of course, your x would, would change to a negative. Okay? And so that's all you have to do, and just keep those reflecting. You know, I told you those colors were important, and you can see why. Because it helps you see the patterns. It helps you see the patterns.